you're sitting, you can take your mask off. I just ask that if you get up to move around, just put your mask back on. But if you feel comfortable taking it off, please do so. It's very restricting, I know. And uh, I think as of Friday, there was we still supposed to wear masks and uh, social distance and all that stuff. But there's no restrictions as far as how many people can be in the building. Thank you for that. I think more than teach or preach or anything this morning, my desire is to just take a few minutes and pastor. You can be seated if you want. Thank you, worship team, for leading us deeper into the presence of the Lord. I want to start off with a little bit of class participation. I want to get everybody involved for a minute. So I'm going to ask a question. And I want you to shout out the answer to me. We okay with that? It won't be anything too hard. So let's just say you go home this afternoon and you notice that your windows are dirty. What cleaner would you use on them? Well, the rest of you don't clean your windows or what? What'd you say, concrete? There's no right or wrong answer here, really, unless, well. So you go home and you go out to church and your car is dirty. What kind of cleaner would you use? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Your kitchen floor is dirty. What kind of cleaner are you going to use? Uh, Who? Pencil. Yes. <laughs> That's the right answer. If you got pizza stains on your nice white shirt, Brother Tony, what kind of stain remover is Sister Debbie going to use? Shout it out. Shout it out. <laughs> Perfect. You got a bunch of stainless steel that your great great grandma gave you that's got a bunch of tarnish on it. What are you going to use to clean that stainless steel? That works. Now, Sister Melissa, if you've got a loved one that hasn't bathed in several weeks, <laughs> what kind of cleaner are you going to use? Shout them out. Who? Shout them out. Shout them out. <laughs> We're going to have a bunch of people walking around with shout bottles, spraying people down. All right, well, that was pretty good. And I'm going to ask a more serious question now, and I'll answer it because it's going to act as my title this morning. But if you and I fall into some kind of temptation, and we allow some kind of sin to enter into our lives, and our heart, and our mind, and our body, and our spirit become dirty and stained with sin, what kind of cleaner would we use? We wouldn't use pine saw, although that would... Maybe work. We wouldn't use shout, but we would use an all-purpose cleaner. That's what I'm going to preach to you for a little while this morning. The Word of God actually teaches us that believers should cleanse their body, mind, heart, and spirit regularly. Psalms 51 and 1 says, after, this is after David had sinned. This is after David had, uh, what he when he should have been out to war, when he should have been picking up his sword and battling, he was on the rooftop watching some chick bathe. And so this is when David decided that he would rather uh, <clears throat> commit adultery than uh, be where he was supposed to be. And so David fell into that temptation. He, he, he sinned. And this is what he said after, after a whole year of playing games with God and going to church and making everything seem like everything was all right. This is what he finally said when the man of God said, David, there's a problem in your life. He said, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, unto, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Verse 2, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. And cleanse me from my sin. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Verse 8. Make me to hear joy and gladness. That 
that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4 and 23. The Bible says, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that you may put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Hebrews chapter 10 and 22. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience or from a sense of guilt, and our bodies washed with pure water. Now, I don't want you to think this morning that I'm preaching to somebody else or I'm pastoring somebody else. I'm talking to you this morning. I'm talking to you. We ought to be cleansing ourselves on a, with a spiritual, all-purpose cleaner on a daily basis. See, in case you haven't already noticed, we are living in an extremely dirty and contaminated world. Every day you and I are surrounded by sin and ungodliness, immorality, hatred, envy, division, racism. Murder, abuse, addiction, and the list just goes on and on and on. You can't watch TV and you can't search the web for about two minutes without one of those things that I just mentioned being injected into our minds or fed into our spirit. Sin is constantly harassing us. Sin is constantly bombarding our hearts, our mind, and our spirit. That's like today, that's why like today, like no other, we've got to be conscious of our desperate need of having an all-purpose cleaner always on hand. And not just today, but we need it daily. We need it often. See, it's one of the main reasons, Sister Pollard, why we've come into the house of God. Yeah. Now, let me just step back for a second and set the record straight. I love it when you and I come into the sanctuary exercising our apostolic right to praise and worship Jesus with everything we got. And my prayer is that you're never going to quit that. You're never going to be embarrassed to do that. You're going to keep doing that. And you're not going to stop for anybody or anything. Because it is always in order to praise God. It is always in order to magnify God. It is always in order to lift up our voice and lift up our hearts with all our heart, mind, body, soul, and strength. So don't ever stop that. Because it's always in order. But can I just tell you, we don't just come to church for the shout. We don't just come to church for the fellowship. We don't just come to church to hear a fancy sermon. When we enter into the house of the Lord, we are here to allow the washing of God's word to cleanse the nastiness and the filthiness from our spirit. Now I can't imagine any sane purpose person purposely ingesting poison that would harm them. You wouldn't drink Lysol on purpose. That's why we got to stay away from toxic things. Things that would try to poison. Things that would try to hinder our relationship with God and the body of Christ, which is the church. Did you know the way to destroy your body is through your mind? Through your mind, you can destroy the body, and not just this body, but the body of Christ. What we look at, what we read, what we listen to, what we sense or feel, 
See, we've got to be extremely careful that we are not allowing the negative voices, uh, the negative opinions and concepts of others uh, to enter into our heart, uh, our minds, and our spirit. Uh, because if we are not careful, we will become victims uh, of somebody else's poison. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, amen. Amen. I told you, I'm not here to preach to you. I'm not even really here to teach. I'm here to pastor you. And I believe some of us are going to get this this morning because the hour that we're living in demands us to get it. We, we, we can't play church any longer. The hour for playing church is long past. The hour for just coming to the house of God just to say we went to the house of God has a long past. We've got to get something underneath us. We've got to get something that we can stand upon. We've got to get ourselves some pillars and lay them on a foundation that says I serve God because I want to. I serve God because I have to. It's the only way that I'm going to make it. If we're not careful listening to the concepts and the opinions of others, let me just stop and tell you, somebody else's opinion, if it's a negative, it don't matter. If it's negative, it don't matter. And it's your job to stop listening to it. Because if we're not careful, we'll become victims of somebody else's poison. And that poison can very well harm, even destroy our relationship with God and our relationship with the body of Christ. Yeah. Listen. Create in me a clean heart of God and renew a right spirit within me is a humbling prayer that we ought to pray often. There are things we hear, things we see, things we sense and touch every day that are all trying to make their way into our heart, our mind, our soul, our spirit. And if we're not careful, those things will keep us away from being spiritually sensitive and connected to God. They'll keep us from hearing the voice of God, and they'll keep us from obeying the word of God. They'll keep us from being faithful to God, and they'll keep us from having faith in God. Because our hearts and our minds and our spirit have been poisoned by the toxins of somebody else or the poison and toxin of this sin-sick world. Well, Bernard posted a few weeks ago on a, on a, uh, 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 a forward that we're on. I don't know if you're on it for the right or not, but he said this. So that point, first of all, let me just look at backtrack and say if we allow somebody else's poison, if we allow the toxin of this world to get into our heart, mind, and spirit, uh, uh, we could, we could, that could potentially destroy all the good growth that we've allowed happen. That could potentially destroy all the maturity that we've allowed ourselves to be a part of, uh, and it could be replaced with deep roots of bitterness. So this is what Brother Bernard posted a few weeks ago. He said, some people seemingly never be, some people seemingly can never be satisfied. They murmur, complain, refuse to cooperate, and are self-willed. They cannot accept correction without becoming angry. They are busybodies. They sow discord within the body. They are tail bearers and cause problems everywhere they go. Then he asked the question, what is wrong? He says it's quite possible that they have a root of bitterness. Watch what Hebrews chapter 12 and 14 says. Hebrews chapter 12 and 14 and 15 says, Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of, of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and therefore, uh, thereby many be defiled. In other words, uh, bitterness uh, will defile your holiness. Bitterness uh, will hinder your relationship with God, uh, and bitterness will hinder your relationship with the body of Christ. Bitterness ought not be allowed to stay in the heart, uh, the mind of a Christian believer. Listen, I am so very thankful that we are able to be back in the building together. 
But can I remind you, faithful saints of God, uh, any time you come into the house of God uh, is a great time uh, for you to put on some all-purpose cleaner. Amen. Amen. Don't ever let there be a time that you come into the presence of God uh, without making a altar connection. Uh, don't ever think that the altar is of no importance. Uh, don't ever think that you visit the altar too much. Well, you know, I prayed about this 99 times. Uh, then you've got to get out of your seat uh, and pray a hundred times. Uh,
but you are not of the world. I don't want to take on worldly habits. Well, listen, I really do appreciate how faithful that everybody was when we were in our online services. But here's what I remind every, I want to remind every faithful saint of God today. In the coming weeks, in the coming months, in the coming years, every chance you get, be in the house of God. And, uh, and allow His word to cleanse you when you get here. bothers me when a lot, a lot bothers me. I'm just a bothered person. But it bothers me when somebody's not in church on Sunday and you know they should be and you hear later on in the week that on Sunday they were cleaning their house. Or they were getting groceries. Now, I'm okay with you cleaning your house if you want to on Sunday. That's up to you. I, I, I'm okay with you getting groceries on Sunday if you want to. That's up to you. But don't miss the house of God and the presence of God just because you want to clean your house. Before your house, before your earthly house is ever clean, you better get into the presence of God and get your spiritual house clean. Because you'll have a better day, you'll have a better week, you'll have a better year, you'll have a better connection with God. months and years, every chance you get, be in the house of God. Uh, Amen. Yeah, that agrees with me. Amen. All I need is one more. Amen. Listen, you, you, you don't come to the house of God for me. So I can write down on a little attendance sheet that you are here to send it into headquarters once a month or a year? Okay, whatever. That's not why you're here. You're not here for me. If you're coming to church for me, you're coming for the wrong reason. If you're coming to church to make connections with other people, you're here for the wrong reasons. Now listen, there's nothing wrong with church connections. I'm not preaching against church connections. But before we do anything else, we need to get into the presence of the Lord and allow ourselves to be washed, allow ourselves to be renewed. Yes. Because yes. the last thing you want to do is walk through this world all week, come into the house of God, yes. not allow yourself to be renewed in the spirit and allow all that toxin and poison to flow from you into somebody else. Yes. Yes. Am I okay, Brother Wininsky? Thank you. In the coming weeks and months and years, every chance you get, be in the house of God and allow his word to cleanse you. Build a new altar if you have to, or go back to an old one and allow it to be the place where you leave all that excess baggage behind. carry around all that nasty negative baggage that somebody else has put on you during the week. Right. Right. Yeah. You know you don't have to carry that around. Right. You don't have to walk like this with a yeah. heavy burden on your shoulders. Oh Lord, why am I so heavy? Lord, why am I feeling like my mind is so dark and confused? Why do I feel like this? Because you've allowed the weight of the world, you've allowed the weight and the poison of somebody else to get upon your shoulders. What you need to do is say, come hell or high water. I, I know that there's church on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and I'm going to get into the house of God and when I get there, I'm going to lift up my heart. I'm going to lift up my voice. I'm going to lift up my hands and I'm going to allow myself to shed the weight See, 
Did you know as a Christian believer, everything you do matters? Yes, sir. Everything we do matters. Everything you allow into your life has an impact on how you grow or don't grow spiritually. Somebody wrote a book called Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. Brother Tenney said, apparently that person never slept in a tent with a mosquito. <laughs> Don't sweat the small stuff. Because that little mosquito will drive you nuts all night long. That little mosquito will keep you awake. Because you can never get it. You can never get it, Brother Ryder. Right? Smack yourself in the head. Oh. 30 seconds later. sweat the small stuff is completely contrary to scripture because your Bible and mine says it's the small things, it's the little boxes that come in and destroy the mind it's the little boxes that you're thinking are no problem that come in and spiritually tear away what you've done everything matters, everything you allow yourself to look at and everything you allow yourself to read matters every conversation you allow yourself to engage in Every relationship you allow yourself to be a part of matters. I'm sorry, but I don't. I've learned something. I've grown up a little bit, sister. This is my sister. She's known me for 22 years. My sister in law. She knows I've grown up a little bit. I don't allow myself to be connected. To toxic people anymore. They don't have nothing I want. And so I withdraw myself from other people. If you can't talk goodness, it doesn't say the toxin of the Lord, it says the goodness of the Lord. fullness of joy at his right hand. As Christian believers, you and I have a choice to make. We can get up every morning and we can allow the pressures of the world to control our thoughts and control our relationship, or we can say, it might, I'm still in the world and I might have a bad day, but I'm choosing right now to wash myself with some old purpose cleaner. I'm going to get into the presence of God. I'm going to allow the anointing to flow over me and wash me clean. Don't sweat the small stuff. Everything you do matters. Every conversation you have with somebody matters. Every relationship you have with somebody matters. And if the conversations that are coming out to you, if, if, they're, if they're trying to pull you under, if they're trying to hinder you, if you feel at all poisoned by it, you need to cut that thing off. Right. Don't just... And here's the, here's the problem. Sometimes we think, well, they're negative, I can help them. No, you cannot. Negative begets negative. You can't help them. You just continue to be who you are. You continue to live in the light. You continue to rise above the situations and the problems that you're going through. And let that person that's always negative about everything in their life, you let them see what God has done in you. And maybe, just maybe, yeah. they'll turn their heart over to God. Amen. Maybe, just maybe, like you said, they'll surrender. Amen. Everything matters. Every influence you allow into your heart, mind, spirit, soul, and life matters in light of eternity. I'm already out on the limb, so I might as well step out a little bit further. You can't.
cannot have one foot in the church and one foot in the world. said, and that's probably the best authority I know. Jesus said, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would rather that thou were cold or hot. So that because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, you just indecide. You can't make up your mind. Well, one day I'm going to serve God, but on Monday I'm not. You know, on Sunday I'm going to put on a nice face. I'm going to serve God, but on Monday I'm going to be angry and bitter and hateful and all that other junk. church needs to stop looking at obvious sin. Because there's no sin gauge. There's no sin gauge. Well, over here, you know, one zero to zero to ten, we got murderers and thieves, and they're like eight to ten. But over here, you got somebody with anger and bitterness and hatefulness and unforgiveness, and they're like a one. God doesn't, you and I have a sin meter. You and I have a sin gauge, but God, sin is sin is sin. I can be on Sunday, but on Monday I'm going to be full. I'm not going to be a murderer, and I'm not going to be a thief and a thief, Steve. But I'm going to I'm going to hate my neighbor. I, I'm going to be angry with my brother or sister. I'm going to be bitter with them. I'm going to be cross with them. I'm going to be angry with them. You might as well join yourself to a murderer because a murderer will probably repent of his sins quicker than you are because that root of oh, I'm going to somebody. I'm going to pull somebody. You cannot have it your way. You cannot have your cake and eat it too. You're either going to be in the church or in the world, but you're not going to be both. Jesus said, if you are, I'd rather you were cold or hot. Make up your mind. You're either in or you're out. But because you can't make up your mind, he said, I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. That wasn't my words. That was God. Spew. He used the word spew. It means all. Throw up. Hat. Oh, that's gross. Some of us need to get that gross. Some of us need to get the idea that if we're not doing it right, God's going to spew us out of his mouth. I'm here to preach to you. I'm here to pastor you today. Listen to me. Be careful if you're going to be saved and stay saved. Because if you're going to make heaven your eternal home, then you've got to make up in your mind to realize that everything you do matters right. in light of eternity. Amen. That's why it's always in order to make it right with God every time you come to the, every, every chance, not every time you come to the house of God, but it's right to make it right with God every chance you get. Amen. I think we ought to start making a pact with ourselves. And when we wake up in the morning and realize I can open my eyes and I still got breath that God gave me in me, it's a good time for me to right now stop right now and say, create in me a clean heart, oh God. Yes. <laughs> Renew a right spirit within me. Because I want to get through the day right. I want to get through the day clean. I want to get through the day without being negative to somebody else. I want to get through the day without being hurtful to somebody else. Jesus. Something we've gotten used to the past little while is you can come back to the piano situation if you want. I, I, I got lots more notes with it. Come on back. Please. Save us. Please. Please. Something we've got used to in the past little while is every time we walk through those doors or you walk into the grocery store or you walk into the doctor's office or wherever you go, we've got to clean our hands with hand sanitizer. You know what I think we ought to do? When we step into the sanctuary, we've got to allow the Word of God to be that all-purpose cleaner that sanitizes us from the head to our toes. It can't just be on my hands. It's got to be on my hands, my feet, my heart, my head. It's got to cover me. God washed me, created me a clean heart. I believe 
doing, we'll do that and make a conscious effort. We'll be more spiritually connected. If we allow ourselves to come into the sanctuary, into the presence of the Lord, and allow ourselves to be sanitized with the word of God, I believe that we'll be more equipped to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself of the knowledge of God bring into captivity every thought. Oh, Pastor, my thoughts run rampant. My thoughts are dark sometimes. My thoughts do this. It's because you haven't submitted to God. It's because you haven't allowed your thoughts to become under captivity to the obedience of Christ. It can happen to all of us. It can happen to any one of us. But that doesn't mean we stay there. You can cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Every high thing you got something in your life this morning that has consumed your thoughts. you got something in your life that has consumed your thinking. It's all you think about. It's all you worry about. It's all you fret about. And that thing has become exalted above God. Will you call upon him while 
close. I need them up close. Please don't make me preach the rest of this message. Maybe the Holy Ghost is only reaching for one. I'm going to say something that's pretty bold, but I've said it before. You're going to have to get over it if you want help. Every one of us is really in trouble like you think you are. If you're really blind like you think you are, then you'll be like Bartimaeus. Because he was blind. And they tried to stop him. Hey, shut up, Bart. Shut up, man. You got to stop it. Jesus is here, yeah, but he's here for somebody else. And Bartimaeus said, no, 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 you don't understand. I've got a need, and he's the one that can help me. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. No, 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 Bartimaeus, be quiet. You're just a blind man. You've been blind all your life. You don't understand. I don't want to be blind anymore. I have an opportunity to be healed. I have an opportunity to have my eyes. You cannot stop me. You cannot quiet me. My pride is long gone out the window. I'm going to get to Jesus. I'm going to get to the altar. And I'm going to make a connection. Yeah, but Pastor, if I reach out, somebody's going to think I've sinned. Somebody's going to think I'm not perfect. I got news for you. We're not. Perfect. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Don't worry about mine or your brother and sister's sin scale. Worry about God's. What is God looking at right now? What do, what do I see on the outside but God sees something differently on the inside? What are you trying to hide from me that you can't hide from God? What have you got on the inside, the outside? Oh, I can hide this up. I can cover up. You might cover it up for a while, but God has got your number this morning. God has got your address this morning. He sent a preacher out here to tell you. No matter where you've been, no matter what you've gone through, no matter what's happening right now, no matter if you've been in this all your life or you've only been in it for six months. There's an all-purpose cleaner that is in this building. His blood is here. And preacher, I've failed so many times. I don't know if I can ever get beyond this. I don't know if I can ever get this out of my heart. Will you please stop making the cross of Jesus Christ a ill effect in your life? Don't say it can't happen. Say it can happen and it will happen because Jesus Christ shed his blood so that my sin could be washed away, so that my shortcomings could be held, so that my mistakes and my problems could be washed away. Here's what we're going to do. This entire building is an altar. But if you want to make a physical change of location from your seat and step into this altar at the front, I'm asking you right now, giving you a few minutes just to step out of your seat and get up here. But I haven't seen God. I haven't seen that. I, 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 I haven't stolen anything in a week. Yeah, but how, how's your attitude? How's your attitude with the body of Christ? Has your, has your heart? Come on, there's already people coming. Would you come? Just stay six feet apart. You're all right. that I can't 
aren't you thankful that God doesn't define us by our actions? He doesn't define us by our mistakes. He doesn't define us by the things that we've done that have been displeasing. He just shows up with mercy. He just shows up with grace. He just shows up with love. So that he will surrender to me. It's yours. service. I'll probably try to finish the message. I'm just thankful for the presence of God. I'm thankful for a place we can be together and feel His presence. But not just feel His presence, connect with His presence.